God created the earth, he didn't ask advice from the angels. He didn't call a committee meeting or take a vote. He simply spoke. And his words were so full of life. His words were so powerful, so unquestionable that everything he spoke came into being immediately. There was never a question as to God's authority or his ability to create the heavens and the earth. But the first question in the Bible came as Satan planted seeds of doubt and questioned the integrity of God's word. Listen to the account from Genesis chapter 3. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden. Satan's initial question didn't directly call God a liar, but that was about to follow. As we read on in Genesis, it says, The woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it or touch it lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, Surely you shall not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. You'll be like God. You'll know good from evil. Notice the devil didn't seem to make a major revision in God's warning about the forbidden fruit. He just rearranged the word not. God had said, you shall not eat or you shall surely die. The devil said, you shall eat and you surely shall not die. How could such a small revision make such a big difference? One version was truth, the other was a lie. The nearest cemetery is a silent witness as to who was telling the truth. The disobedience of Adam and Eve brought spiritual and physical death to the human race, just as God had warned. You know, the second question in the Bible is one that's been repeated again and again throughout the centuries. Where are you? This is the question God asked Adam in Genesis 3:9, when Adam was hiding in the bushes and the Lord continues to ask you and I that same question today. Make no mistake about it, God knows exactly where we are. He wasn't looking for missing persons when he asked Adam and Eve, where are you? He knew where they were hiding, but he wanted them to understand the full ramifications of what they had done. God wanted them to experience the painful realization that they were now alienated from him. He wanted them to see that they were accountable for their actions. And just as he asked Adam and Eve, the Lord is asking you and I today, where are you? How are you going to answer him? Are you walking right beside him? Or are you hiding somewhere behind the bushes of denial and blame? When the Lord asks that question, many people choose the route Adam tried, blame shifting. Adam responded, the woman who you gave me to be with me, she gave me from the tree and I ate it. Now, instead of taking any responsibility himself, Adam blamed God because he said, God, you're the one who brought Eve into my life. And then he blamed Eve for giving him the forbidden fruit. And all the while, Eve was blaming the serpent. God wasn't buying any of their excuses. He wanted Adam and Eve to see that their predicament was brought about as a result of the choices they had made. Take some time today and think about the choices you've made in your life, both good and bad, and look for God moving in the middle of them and ask the Lord for wisdom. I want to thank you for spending time with me today and I hope you'll come back tomorrow when I share the next step towards experiencing a new beginning in your life. God bless you.